This is shuttle launch control at T minus 20 minutes and holding. We have approximately five minutes remaining in this 10 minute built in hold. The shuttle weather officer has completed giving his weather assessment to launch director Bob Seek. And at this time, the ceiling is at the margin of 8,000 feet. So the plan at this point is to proceed down to T minus nine minutes and evaluate the situation. And we will hold at T minus nine uh, if we do not have uh, ceilings better than 8,000 broken. The primary transatlantic site, Ben Gurir, is go for launch at this time. At T minus 20 minutes and holding, this is shuttle launch control. All personnel again, TD on 212, conducting a T minus 20 minute briefing. The launch window opens at 1418 GMT, closes at 1825 GMT. A second launch attempt is possible if a recycle occurs. There's one caller this morning, starts at 1737.30 GMT, ends at 1739.30 GMT. Wow. If the launch cannot be accomplished within the launch window or if the following times are exceeded, the NTD will call cutoff. Our APU runtime hold time can stay in seven minutes, lock drain, lock drain back estimate is 6.8 minutes. If the hold is issued and re request an issue between T minus nine minutes and T minus 31 seconds, the countdown clock will be restarted upon successful resolution of the problem without a go survey made of all elements. PLT, at T minus five minutes, perform APU start upon command of OTC only. PLT Raj. Uh, CDR, the pad egress system is nominal. Evacuation heel pass number eight. CDR copy. The fine room launch team disabled telephone ringers at this time. Ingress and egress of fine room will not be allowed after resuming the count at T minus 20 minutes until after launch or a flight or egress if a recycle occurs. All personnel not active in terminal count monitors channel 217. All personnel bear in mind that critical post-launch operations will be in progress to so keep fire room noise and activities to a minimum. After T minus 20 minutes, all problems or trends that require a countdown clock hold will be reported to the NTD on channel 212 together with your recommendation. After T minus 5 minutes, any hold, manual or GLS, should be accompanied by a description of the problem and a recommendation. The count clock will continue until T minus 31 seconds until the recommendation, unless the recommendation is to hold the next milestone. SB, any comments for the crew? Uh, yes, uh, CDR, SB, how do you read? CDR, I'm clear. Okay, I got a couple items. Uh, water spray boiler number two, steam vent temp is below 130, so your APU2 ready to start talk back will be barber pole. And they also, they tell me that your in-flight maintenance kit is in compartment seven and eight, should be in nine and ten. And that's all I have. Have a good flight. And for the rest of the Okay, we copy that. Thank you. For the rest of the team, uh, we will not be locking the firing room up uh, until we pick up the clock at T minus nine minutes. We'll be extending the hold at uh, T minus nine minutes. Are there any questions? Oh, that could close the briefing. And there's OTC on net 212. All personnel after transition to OPS 101, discontinue all LGB PMU reads for remainder of countdown. OTC CGNC. Red CGNC. Yeah, I'm your pre file line is complete, ready for transition to OPS 1. And we have 10 minutes from 1344-58. Copy that. Same can see copy. I copy. And we're complete to step uh, 895. Copy that. Flight entity verify rate is in the count at 20 minutes. Copy. DPS OTC. DPS ahead. Copy step 888. View. And we copy. Sentinel personnel countdown clock will resume at 848 Eastern Time. This is shuttle launch control at T minus 20 minutes and holding. We're now 30 seconds away from coming out of this planned 10 minute built in hold at T minus 20. 
inertial measurement unit. Pre-flight alignment is now complete, ready for the transition to Ops 101. Yes, sir, I can give you step 955 at this time. Coming out of the hold now in about seven seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. T minus 20 minutes and counting. Purge of the three fuel cells is now underway. And the data processing system engineer has confirmed the onboard computers are in the, are in the process of making that transition to the terminal countdown configuration. Stand by for confirmation of that event. The landing and recovery director has reported that the shuttle landing facility is ready and configured for the launch in case of an RTLS, and that the solid rocket booster ships are on station. confirmation that we're in Ops 101, the primary launch program. Standing by now for a dump of that Ops 101 program to examine for any miscompares. This takes about seven minutes to complete. Entity Houston Flight 212. Entity. BFS pre-flight uplink load is complete. And we're now standing at T-minus 16 minutes and counting. Next hold is at T-minus 9 minutes for 10 minutes. And at that point, we will make a final assessment of the weather to determine whether or not we have ceilings acceptable to pick up or whether or not we should stand by and wait for improving conditions. At this time, all of the 
criteria are go, with the exception of ceilings below 8,000 feet. Like Ken Cameron in the process of performing the main propulsion system helium reconfiguration. Yeah, Ohm's RCS cross speed configuration is complete for the clock. Copy that. Icon. This procedure opens the helium isolation valves necessary for the in-flight purges of the engines. OTC, PLT. Go ahead. Roger, arms interconnect uh, cannot be enabled and the MPS helium ISOs and the pneumatic helium ISOs are open. Ken Cameron having reported now the quantities of storable propellant on board, those figures being confirmed. NASA Test Director Mike Leinbach confirming now that all personnel have been cleared from the launch danger area at this time. Now two minutes away from going into the 10 minute hold at T minus nine. Shuttle weather officer is briefing launch director Bob Seek. There uh, are some showers, uh, rain showers within 20 miles of KSC. Melbourne now reporting their clouds have gone scattered. And the uh, clouds at the shuttle landing facility now reported to be at 7,500 feet, so that would be below our margins.
Launch Director Entity 212. One minute away now from going into the nine minute built in hold. This is Shuttle Launch Control. We're now at T-minus nine minutes and holding. We're assessing the weather conditions at this time. However, based on the information that we have now, we probably would not be picking up uh, at the time it would be appropriate to come out of uh, this built-in hold after 10 minutes. Otherwise, though, as far as the Space Shuttle Atlantis and the Gamma Ray Observatory, we're ready to fly. We're just simply waiting for improvement in cloud conditions. At T minus nine minutes and holding, this is Shuttle Launch Control.
This is shuttle launch control at T minus nine minutes and holding. We have four and a half minutes remaining in this built in hold. Brewster Shaw has completed his poll of the mission management team and all of those mission managers report that they are ready to fly. Uh, KSC does have a request at this time to extend the built in hold to allow for an increase or, or increase in the ceilings which uh, right now are uh, at 8,000 or below, and we do require above 8,000 feet for a launch this morning. Otherwise, no significant problems in work and uh, simply awaiting an improvement in cloud cover. At T minus nine minutes and holding, this is shuttle launch control. Is, uh, go with some words when you get done with the rest of your poll in TD. Copy. Myla. SDM. SDM is go. Safety console. Safety console is go. SPE. SPE is go. CDR. Go. LRD. LRD go. SRO. SRO is no go at this time. And no go based on what? Based on uh, weather and blast. Uh, that's permanent. Uh, ceiling's less than 8,000 feet. I copy on flight. Uh, your words? Uh, flight uh, on 212, uh, we have uh, cleared the RTLS weather. We're recommending go. Current observations are 7,500 thin broken from the ground. The weather aircraft has cleared us to see the approach. Uh, therefore, we have cleared our last hurdle to be go for launch. We would like to update the crew. We would like to change the RTLS runway from 15233. And with your go, we would like to do that. I copy, proceed. Yeah, uh, RTLS. Go ahead. All right, just Steve, I guess you heard that uh, on the air to ground. We'd like to change the RTLS runway to 33. Uh, the problem is basically that we're ending up a little low energy when we go to 15, touching down. Uh, between seven and 800 feet in the STA predicted touchdown distance uh, and what Dan was seeing on 3 is around 1,900 to 2,000 feet. So we're going to go ahead and ask you to switch over to KSC 33 for the RTLS runway. Okay, copy that. Do you want to close aim point on 3-3? Negative. Nominal aim point on 3-3 and a reminder for MLS Channel 6. Okay, MLS Channel 6 and the KSC 33 nominal aim point. That's affirmative. And uh, CNSC, OTC. My comp will be performing 994. PLT panel 08. PLT, OTC. This is shuttle launch control at T minus nine minutes and holding. We are awaiting a recommendation to proceed with the countdown based on an assessment that if we change our return to launch site runway from 15 to 33, that clouds would be acceptable. That's being discussed at this time. Engineering is go. Copy, thank you. Safety and quality director. 
come back to weather. Ops uh, manager, one director on 212. Stand by one time. Anthony SRO two uh, two Go ahead, SRO. Uh, yes, sir. Be advised that uh, our RSO has waived the ceiling requirement, but he is still evaluating the blast data. It'll take him about another five minutes. I copy and launch direction. You copy? Oh, wait, copy. And launch director, Optimization. Uh, go ahead, sir. Roger. We have no constraints, and you are clear to proceed with the launch. Oh, wait, copy. Maintain quiet in the fire room, please. And Cape Weather, Launch Director 212. Launch Director, is Cape Weather, and OS 212. Okay, uh, go ahead with your final forecast and wind. Uh, Roger, sir, we have no weather launch constraints violated. Uh, steady state wind forecast for launch from 110 degrees at 12 knots. Over. I copy. MTD launch director, what's your posture for coming out of the hold uh, once we hear from rain? Uh, we need to hear back from HTD and activate recorders, which we can do on the fly, and then we'll be ready. Okay, copy. MTD launch director. MTD. Uh, as, as soon as you're ready, we'll go uh, pick up the clock and go on down to uh, five minutes to wait on the uh, uh, final confirmation for SRO, which uh, we may get on the fly. So uh, whenever your team is ready, we can proceed. I copy. Uh, with, with, the, with, of course, uh, the fact that we're going to hold at five until we hear from range. Understood. HTD, MTD, 212. This is HTD. Uh, as you copy that, we're going to pick up the clock and march on down to five, and if you're not ready, we'll hold there. Uh, you copy that? I copy. Uh, flight, CISL, JRPS, NTD on 212. Flight's on 212. CISL? JRPS. Uh, activate recorders, please. Copy that, we need team. PC on 145, please. Same QC to copy. Same QC copy. GLS entity. GLS go. Oh, pick up the clock on your count, please. Copy that. Got the clock will zoom on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. T minus nine minutes and holding. ELT, OTC. GLS auto sequence has been in the ELT, go ahead. Configure fuel cell central bus door switches. Roger, central bus source to fuel cell. That's complete. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus 8 minutes, 25 seconds and counting. The plan at this point is to go down to T-minus 5 and hold and wait uh, directions from the superintendent of range operations that we can proceed. We'll go now to mission control in Houston for a readiness statement there. Flight proceed with transmission and stored program command. Flight will come. This is Mission Control Houston. As the countdown progresses towards uh, launch this morning, the uh, flight crew, the 
shuttle vehicle and the flight control team here in Houston have been declared ready to fly by Ascent Flight Director Wayne Hale. Uh, weather at the primary transoceanic abort landing site, uh, Ben Guerrero, Morocco, has been declared go. Uh, weather pilot Charlie Bolden flying the range at uh, that TAL site uh, described the weather as great this morning. Yeah, let's go. The launch conditions uh, are presenting no concerns for flight controllers here as uh, there are no showers or weather activities of any concern in the launch corridor. Uh, there was a decision made here in Houston to redesignate the RTLS runway from 15 to 33 for enhanced uh, winds and visibility. At this point, uh, we're continuing to count down to a potential five-minute hold. All positions here in the flight control room are, uh, are ready to, to press on with the count for uh, a liftoff this morning. Go ahead, Bob. Well, okay, Steve, so looks like the weather is going to cooperate, so we'll see if you can get it started off this year. Have a good one. Oh, many thanks from us to you and the entire team, Bob. We appreciate it very much, and we'll have a good flight. Yes, sir. The ACD, OTC. The ACD. You have your auto count complete yet? Auto count complete. All I need to do is test, uh, get the comp test gas confidence check. Copy that. And we're awaiting final word that we will continue with the countdown at T minus five. And ACD, do you expect that to be complete in the next minute? Uh, yes, I do. Okay, thank you. GSRP OTC, start APU and hydraulic strip chart recorders. Copy, uh, recorders are up. DLT OTC, perform APU pre start. Roger that. Direction now to the commander to begin APU pre-start. Two gray talkbacks, number two is buffer hole. Coming up on T minus five minutes and 30 seconds. Two, we expected that on number two. Uh, HDD, NPD, how you doing? We're complete with our uh, test gas confidence checks, and uh, we're looking good. Are right, you going to continue to count at five minutes? That's firm. Copy, let's copy. Appears we will be continuing the count past T minus five. T minus four minutes, 56 seconds and counting. Pilot Ken Cameron reporting that APU pre start is complete. CDR, OTC, reconfigure heaters. CDR, Roger. Solid rocket booster and external tank safe and arm devices have now been armed. That is complete. OTC CDR heater reconfigure complete. APUs are now running. Standing by to transfer to internal power. Gimbal check going on now of the three main engines of Atlantis. Final check of the orbiter steering. All systems go for launch. Main engines now in the start position.
caution and warning memory. Verify no unexpected errors. CLT Rod. Standing by now to retract the gaseous oxygen vent hood. And the beanie cap now being retracted and the swing arm will move away from the external tank. In a moment, the crew will be instructed to close their visors. Memory's cleared, no unexpected errors. Copy that, OTC to flight crew. Close and lock your visors, initiate O2 flow, and enjoy the ride. CDR, Roger, and thanks a million. Yeah, let's go for ET, LH2, pressurization. T minus 90 seconds and counting. At T minus one minute, the ground launch sequencer will verify that the space shuttle main engines are ready to start. Liquid hydrogen tank now at flight pressure. minus one minute. Ground launch sequencer verifying main engines are ready. Residual hydrogen burn igniters are armed. T minus 45 seconds. Sound suppression water system armed. That will release water at T minus 16 seconds at the rate of 900,000 gallons a minute. T minus 31 seconds. We have the handoff to Atlantis's onboard computers. Atlantis now controlling. 25. 20. T minus 16 seconds. Sound suppression water system operating. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Main engine start, three good engines up and burning, two, one, zero, and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Atlantis and the Gamma Ray Observatory, seeking out the explosive forces of the universe. Cool program, Houston. Roger, all the minus. Houston now controlling. Roll maneuver complete. Placing Atlantis and crew in the heads down attitude and on course for its 828 and a half degree inclination orbit. Engine throttling down now to help maintain uh, optimum aerodynamic conditions as Atlantis accelerates through the dense lower atmosphere. Engines throttling further down now to 67%. Velocity 860 feet per second, all systems performing well. Atlantis now beginning to emerge from the uh, region of maximum dynamic pressure. Engines are throttling up. Atlantis Houston, go at throttle up. Atlantis's three main engines burning at 104% rated thrust. Velocity 2,200 feet per second, altitude 67,000 feet, downrange distance eight nautical miles. All systems performing well. The next uh, milestone in this uh, climb to orbit will be uh, solid rocket booster burnout and staging. That coming up in just about 15 seconds. We have confirmation of a clean separation on time. 
Guidance has converged. Uh, velocity now 4,200 feet per second. Altitude 190,000 feet. Downrange distance 36 nau nautical miles. Atlantis Houston, performance is nominal. Roger, nominal. That call an indication that performance of the shuttle main engines and boosters in the first stage of flight uh, was was uh, good. Three main engines continuing to burn well. Uh, hydraulic and electrical systems performing well. Altitude now 246,000 feet. Houston, two engine Ben Greer. Two engine Ben Greer. Atlantis could now make a transoceanic abort landing at Ben Greer on only two engines, should that become necessary. Altitude 271,000 feet. Velocity 5,300 feet per second. Downrange distance 72 nautical miles. Time, 3 minutes, 30 seconds. All systems performing very well. We're just about uh, 30 seconds away from reaching the point of no return, the point at which uh, return to the launch site abort would not be an option. Altitude now 314,000 feet, velocity 6,200 feet per second, downrange 102 nautical miles. Atlantis Houston, negative return. Negative return. Well, that call a confirmation that the only abort options at this point would be an abort to orbit or a transoceanic abort landing at uh, Ben Gurir. Should either become necessary, all systems continuing to perform well. Good hydraulics, good electrical system. Uh, engines uh, holding in at 104% rated thrust. Altitude now 354,000 feet. Velocity 7,900 feet per second. Downrange distance 160 nautical miles. Atlantis Houston, pressed ATO, select Banjul. Pressed ATO, select Banjul. Atlantis can now reach a safe orbit with only two engines should that become necessary. Time five minutes, all systems performing well. Altitude 370,000 feet, velocity 9,300 feet per second, downrange 204 nautical miles. Atlantis, Droop Banjo 109. Droop Banjo 109. Atlantis, Houston, press to Miko. Press to Miko. That call an indication that Atlantis has now gained enough upward momentum to reach a normal engine cutoff target, even should one engine fail. All systems continuing to perform well. Ascent going very smoothly. Time, 6 minutes, 3 seconds. Altitude 372,000 feet, velocity 12,000 feet per second. Single engine banjo 104. Single engine banjo 104. Atlantis could now make a transoceanic abort landing at uh, Banjo de Gambia on uh, only one engine should that become necessary. Hydraulic and electrical systems performing well, three good engines. Downrange distance now, 360 nautical miles, altitude 370,000 feet. Atlantis Houston, single engine press 104. Single engine press 104. That calls an indication that Atlantis could stand to lose two engines at this point and still reach uh, main engine cutoff targets on uh, one engine burning at 104%. All three engines continuing to uh, perform very solidly at 104%.
Hydraulic and electrical systems uh, doing very well. Altitude now 354,000 feet. Downrange distance increasing now 499 nautical miles. Relative velocity 18,000 feet per second. Time, 7 minutes, 38 seconds. Just about uh, 25 seconds away from, uh, uh, from main engine cutoff. We've got 3G throttling. Engine's beginning to throttle back now. Throttle settings at 95% in order to maintain uh, G-force structural limitations. Atlantis uh, now traveling at 23,000 feet per second, altitude 352,000 feet, downrange distance 645 nautical miles. Main engine cutoff time uh, will be 8 minutes 33 seconds, time now 8 minutes 20 seconds. Roger that, Atlantis. No DTO. Go for the DTO, and we had a fail off jet on right manifold one. Roger that, Atlantis. We see it. No action for you. It's R1U. This is Mission Control Houston. We've had confirmation of an external tank separation on time. Uh, crew given a go for the uh, photographic DTO, which will involve Mission Specialist Linda Godwin, located on the mid-deck, uh, uh, making her way up into the flight deck. As the vehicle is uh, pitched over to provide good uh, photographic angles, Godwin will photograph the external tank as it drifts away and very slowly tumbles back into the atmosphere. In addition, we got an uh, indication that uh, uh, reaction control system jet R1U failed off. Uh, there's no action uh, for the crew at this point. There uh, are no requirements for an Ohms 1 burn. The uh, direct insertion has provided uh, uh, insertion to the desired apogee target for Atlantis. Crew should be getting underway very shortly with their main uh, propulsion system propellant dump sequence. That sequence will involve uh, purging, dumping uh, propellant from the main propulsion systems and uh, repositioning the main engines. Following that uh, activity, the crew will be shutting down auxiliary power units and hydraulic systems as they'll no longer be required for uh, the remainder of the uh, insertion and post-insertion activities. Flight controllers here in Houston uh, surveying uh, all orbiter systems find the vehicle to be very clean. There will be no uh, modifications or changes to nominal ohms tube burn setup. Booster officer here in the flight control room is uh, watching the main propellant system dump, uh, noting that uh, things are going very smoothly. Flight Director Wayne Hale pulling the room here, looking for a go from all positions for uh, continuation towards the Ohms 2 burn, which will serve to circularize the uh, orbit of Atlantis.
current or orbital parameters are uh, 236 by 32 nautical miles. The uh, OMS-2 burn will circuitize the orbit at 243 nautical miles for uh, nominal orbit operations. Atlantis Houston, we'd like you to hold off on APU shut down here for a moment. We're looking at a problem with uh, water spray boiler number two. Ken, we'd like you to switch to the B controller on water spray boiler two. Roger that. Mechanical systems officer is here in the flight control room watching a uh, a trend with water spray boiler number two primary controller uh, before the crew shuts down the auxiliary power unit uh, number two. Uh, the ground has uh, suggested that the crew switch over to controller B so that flight controllers can get a look at uh, how that controller is operating that water spray boiler. The boilers are used to cool the hydraulic systems and uh, lube oil uh, that uh, keeps the auxiliary power units lubricated in the uh, hydraulic fluid that provides uh, uh, mechanical pressure or hydraulic pressure to the mechanical systems on board the vehicle. Manus Houston, can you have a go for APU shutdown? What we thought we uh, saw there was some ice in water spray boiler number two. It looks like it's uh, cleared out now, and water spray boiler ought to be good on both the A and the B controller. Go for APU shutdown. Okay, it looked a little high to me and came down nicely. You want me to stay in B on number two? Manus Houston, can you can go ahead and go back to the A controller on boiler number two? That's complete, Steve, and the APUs are coming down. I do that. The condition on a water spray boiler number two uh, appears to have been uh, nothing more than a nuisance. There's a little ice built up in that water spray boiler. Uh, the cycling of the controllers from A to B has uh, cleared the problem up. Uh, there is no mechanical problem to pursue. Water spray boilers are uh, in good shape. That paves the way for the crew to shut down the auxiliary power units and hydraulic systems, including those water spray boilers assigned to each of the hydraulic systems. Uh, very shortly thereafter, they'll be activating the flash evaporator system and its associated heaters. Following those activities, uh, onboard uh, software will be moded to OPS 105 to provide for the OMS-2 uh, burn target setup and uh, the OMS-2 and the OMS-2 burn to circuitize Atlantis's orbit at 243 nautical miles. This is Mission Control Houston Mechanical Systems Officer confirms a clean shutdown of the auxiliary power units. Atlantis Houston, Steve, you have a go for nominal ohms too. Nominal targets are all good. Thank you, Steve. It's good work.
Atlantis Houston with some switch throws for you on 812. Atlantis Houston, uh, disregard the call for the switches on A12. Okay, thank you. Mission Control Houston, uh, Environmental Control Officer reports that uh, the crew is uh, pressing on in their ascent checklist, configuring the vehicle for uh, orbit operations as well as for the upcoming OMS-2 burn to circularize their orbit at 243 nautical miles. Uh, flash evaporator system and associated heaters are in the process of being activated on board. That flash evaporator system will provide uh, uh, cooling to orbiter systems until the payload bay doors can be opened and provide uh, radiation cooling for the orbital phase of flight. Uh, so far, with the exception of a, uh, a single reaction control system thruster R1U, which uh, failed off late in the uh, powered uh, or late in the ascent, which uh, is being investigated. Uh, all systems aboard Atlantis appear to be performing exceptionally well. This is Mission Control Houston. Propulsion officer and uh, her support team have uh, worked to uh, identify the precise nature of the failure of uh, RCS Jet R1U. And the signature appears to look very much like uh, the two jet failures uh, that occurred on STS-36. Uh, potential causes uh, some sort of uh, uh, blockage in the line by, uh, due to contaminants or bubbles. Uh, if, if an additional jet were to fail, uh, a hot fire is expected to be uh, uh, an alternative uh, course of action to uh, clear those lines out. That was a protocol that was exercised on STS-36 that uh, proved very successful. At this point, uh, that jet failure is not uh, considered uh, to be an issue of concern here in the flight control room. As the crew and flight controllers press on through the ascent checklist, preparing the vehicle for the OMS-2 burn and uh, ensuing orbit operations. At this point, the crew is uh, beginning to uh, conduct the MPS vacuum inerting process, which is simply a matter of allowing the uh, vacuum of the environment around the vehicle to draw any 
uh, residual propellant out of the main propulsion system. that Atlantis you have a go for the maneuver and the Ohms 2 solution looks good We're now 18 minutes away from the ignition of twin orbital maneuvering system engines on Atlantis to uh, boost the perigee of the orbit and refine uh, the operational orbit in a circular, uh, at a circular altitude of 243 nautical miles. Live telemetry from the vehicle indicating that Atlantis is maneuvering to the Ohms 2 burn attitude. And we have confirmation from the mechanical systems officer here in the control room that the uh, external tank umbilical door closure has been accomplished and that those doors uh, closed uh, uh, nominally. There are uh, expected... Uh, Houston, we see that the ET doors are closed and latched, and you're on the way to attitude. If you've got time, we'd like a debris report, and we also have some words for you on R1U, if you're ready. Okay. Uh, we show the doors uh, uh, closed and latched also. Uh, we saw some small debris come by uh, above the velocity of about 10K, 10 to 12, 13K in there. And uh, other than that, nothing to report. We'll look it over uh, more closely and give you a, a more detailed report. Roger that, Steve. And uh, the prop folks have determined that R1U is a real fail-off, similar to the problems on uh, STS-36. No action for you. Should we get a subsequent jet failure, we may ask you to do a hot fire, but uh, nothing for now. Okay, copy. Thank you, Steve. Again, the loss of that jet uh, not considered to be an impact or pro propose any uh, sort of uh, complications for on-orbit operations. That's uh, one of several jets that fire in the same direction, and loss of one uh, will not uh, decrease any maneuvering capability in, in orbit. Flight controllers uh, who were watching the closure of the ET umbilical doors uh, noted that the uh, drive rates and duration of close time were right on the money. They met the uh, designed uh, uh, rates and, and closure times uh, without any incident. We're now 15 minutes away from uh, Ohm's 2 burn. All systems performing well, all uh, activities in this uh, latter part of the ascent checklist uh, progressing very smoothly.
Atlantis Houston referenced those uh, thermal APU messages. Go ahead, Houston. Roger that. We've got switches for you on A-12. Okay, we're ready for A-12 switches. Roger, can a uh, APU heater, tank, fuel line, water system, 1B, 2B, and 3B, three switches to auto? Thanks, Atlantis.
Houston, Atlantis. Uh, we like our configuration for the bird. Roger that, Atlantis. We concur. Your configuration is good for the burn, and we'll be with you for uh, the first portion of the burn. We are going to lose you at about 44 plus 40. We'll pick you up on the other side at uh, 50, 50 minutes even. Okay, thank you. This is Mission Control Houston. We're now one minute, 20 seconds away from the firing of Atlantis's two orbital maneuvering system engines to uh, uh, circularize the orbit of the vehicle and crew at 243 nautical miles for orbit operations on this flight. The crew has completed uh, preparations of the vehicle for the burn and flight controllers on the ground watching live telemetry from the vehicle uh, concur that all systems are properly configured and in place. Okay, we copy. Now 30 seconds away from ignition of the orbital maneuvering system engines. Engine pressurization uh, looks good. We're about three minutes and 20 seconds away from losing signal through the tracking and data relay satellite east. I have the opportunity to watch uh, the burn get underway here before we lose signal with the vehicle. Guidance, propulsion, and uh, GNNC officers here in the flight control room report that uh, the burn is underway and all parameters are uh, are uh, are very good. Burn began on time, and all systems performing well. Houston, we're about a minute and a half from LOS. The burn looks great so far. We'll see you on the other side at uh, 50 plus zero zero. Okay, we'll see you there.
This is Mission Control Houston. Just 45 minutes into the flight of Atlantis on STS-37. Uh, we have passed out of range of contact with the vehicle as Atlantis uh, moves beyond the range of the tracking and data relay satellite system. We'll be out of contact with Atlantis for just about five minutes. As uh, we lost signal, the orbital maneuvering system burn to circuitize Atlantis's orbit was going very smoothly. At uh, last look, uh, the burn had affected uh, so far a perigee or low end of the orbit uh, all the way up to 223 nautical miles and climbing. Again, the circuitor target is 243 nautical miles for nominal orbit operations. All in all, a very clean and uneventful launch and ascent to orbit. Uh, completion of the circuitization following insertion to orbit uh, going very well also. The only uh, failure or condition of note was the uh, uh, reaction control system jet R1U, which failed off. Uh, but uh, the signature of that failure looks very much like uh, uh, jet failures on previous flights. Uh, those jets were recovered uh, by the uh, conduct of a RCS hot fire, just a short uh, blast of the jets to clear those lines. At this point, uh, that's not even being considered a course of action as uh, R1U is one of several jets that fire in that direction and is not considered uh, to threaten uh, any of the orbital maneuvering capability required for this flight. Should an additional failure occur for some reason, uh, a hot fire might be considered at that time, but right now uh, that failure represents no impact or concern. Again, we'll acquire signal again in about 3 minutes 20 seconds and uh, determine the uh, status and end results of the Ohms 2 burn. Just about the same time, considering a good ohm, Ohms 2 burn, uh, crew and flight controllers will be moving into the post-insertion phase of flight, which will involve reconfiguration of the data processing systems on board Atlantis, as well as uh, opening the payload bay doors and then getting out of their launch and entry suits and into the uh, more comfortable short-sleeve uh, shirt uh, uniforms that are worn during the orbit operations phase. Again, all systems performing well and all uh, events progressing very smoothly in the early stages of this uh, shuttle mission. We're just about uh, 47 and a half minutes into the flight and we'll be acquiring signal in two and a half minutes with uh, the crew aboard Atlantis. This is Mission Control.
This is Mission Control Houston. We've reacquired signal with the vehicle. All flight controllers report that the vehicle looks to be in a good configuration, that there are no residuals from the uh, uh, the OMS-2 burn, which has been completed apparently on time with the desired effects. We're now in a 243 circular orbit. We're standing by for voice contact now with the crew.